Blake Baggett built a reputation from nothing in the 250 class in 2011 and 2012. He was given the nickname El Chupacabra due to his come from behind attacks late in the motos. Blake Baggett is gaining one second per lap. I mean, the lights class, it didn't even matter what kind of start I got. For some reason, I was able to adapt to situations super fast. Baggett now is going after Moxon. There are three quarters of a lap to go. Baggett goes into the number one run. I just had everything going. One of the greatest comebacks in the history of the Hangtown Classic. Blake worked under Alden Baker and had multi-time champion Ryan Villapoto as a training partner when he won his first and only 250 title. But the partnership dissolved shortly after due to circumstances out of their control. Unfortunately, in my contracts, the 450 rider, whoever is the heavy hitter at the time, can actually buy out another rider. It was tough because he just won a championship, and now he's gone. The following four years, Blake would remain in obscurity, riddled with injuries and poor performances, which led to the assumption that he may never experience the same level of success as he did on a 250 under Alden's program. You know, people will say that that's why I wasn't winning, but at the same time, we're in the premier 450 class now, fastest guys in the world, and I've been able to climb my way to the top of that, doing probably complete opposite of what, <laughs> what I was doing. This is the first time this year we've seen the type of old school El Chupacabra charges from Baggett. Blake Baggett, his first ever 450 motocross overall victory. Through the first six rounds, Blake Baggett has won two overalls, making 2017 his best season since working with Baker. Battle is on for the lead here. You got El Chupacabra and Jason Anderson fighting for it. Intensifying the wedge driven between Baggett and Baker is the fact that Alden now trains with Blake's arch rival, Jason Anderson and the friction between the two has escalated, given the incident at Redbud last round. Oh, oh. Jason Anderson chops down Baggett like a cherry tree. Blake's crash resulted in a thumb injury that has sidelined him from training this week, and it is questionable if he will race the next round. Meanwhile, at the Baker's factory, for Alden, 250 points leader Zach Osborne, and 450 championship contenders Marvin Muscan and Jason Anderson. It is business as usual on a Thursday as they prepare for Southwick Raceway in less than two days' time. All right, all I'm asking is for 12 good laps. Then we're going to take a break, and then we're going to come out here and get into some speed. Don't make it to where when we retire that we tell you we can't stand the sight of you someday. Yes, <laughs> I don't want that to happen. I've worked my way through the sport to be at a level to reach one of the most prestigious championships. It's surreal sometimes. At the same time, you try and uh, block that out because you know there is a task at hand. These next few rounds are very crucial. The confidence Anderson has gained through his results on the weekend has propelled his speed on the practice track. But as motocross has proved time and again, riding the edge has its consequences. got a motocross facility and one of my riders just crashed really hard and uh, he's a lot of pain. He's maybe okay, maybe just got a big hematoma yeah. and... We never know with him because remember last time he's like, I'm fine. Yeah, maybe the shoulder a little bit that he had the collarbone broken. You're walking up on the scene and wondering like, okay, is this, is this now his season over? How bad? And you know, heck, I'm praying. <laughs> Hopefully you're good and uh, it's hard not to take it personally. If it's a board tomorrow. Thankfully, I feel like he's going to be okay. There's no broken bones, there's no issues. But, you know, I mean, he's going to be sore tomorrow, and, and we're literally flying to the race. Jason will be taken to the hospital and checked for internal injuries, and his physical state will be in question for the next race, just as his fellow rival, Blake Baggett. All right, let's do it. Back to work. Alden's mentality 
is to not allow his riders to be left with a visual of an ambulance for their last practice session before a race and insists that the training continues. Hey! Everyone would have just thought, oh, let's shower up and go home and we'll leave it at that and it was a rough day and we'll do better the next time. But we are in a championship hunt. Jason's in good hands, he's gonna go and get checked out. I always try to take a negative and let's try and get a positive out of it. Good job, Mob. That looked good. Southwick Raceway is the most demanding and unpredictable circuit on the series due to its sandy terrain. The deep sediment has been known to seize moving parts on the motorcycle and redline motors as it works overtime searching for traction. Southwick Racetrack, the great equalizer. The sand grabs horsepower. It is thirsty for horsepower. Practice lap times for Eli Tomac, Blake Baggett, and Marvin Muscan mirror their top three standings in the points chase. But unfortunately, Jason Anderson wasn't able to complete a single lap due to his crash less than two days ago. So, Bob, man, I will take the pain that whenever I land up with a jump, I like flinch. What a tough day to start off right out of the gate. Both my guys have lost a lot of points, so we're behind. We've almost got to force the other guys into having more mistakes and bad days. I've raced a lot of sand races in Belgium and Holland, and I like the sand. I had good starts last year, so I'm sure I can do good. I did go see uh, Baggett. He stumped jacked up right here. The main knuckle is where I'm getting a lot of the pain from. It's an hour of pain, and the best man's going to win the championship and the one that can fight through the most difficult phases. He's decided that he's still going to race with an injury. We've not gone to get it checked out. If it is a break or if the ligament is torn off, that just adds so much more pressure when he's on the line. And now it is go time. He's crazy. And in turn number one they come. Who's it going to be? Blake Baggett, who's been running with a crippled wing, now gets out into the number one position. Oh my goodness, Marvin Muskin in turn three on the ground. All eyes are on Blake Baggett, but here comes Eli. Tomac goes on to the inside and he got him. Eli Tomac takes the lead. Marvin Muskin, who was back as far as 18th at the beginning of this moto, has made his way up to the number 10 spot. Eli Tomac cruised to his fifth straight moto win at Southwick. And after a third turn pileup, Marvin Muskan charged all the way back to fourth place. But the headline of Moto One was the injured Blake Baggett, as he led the first three laps of the race and held on to an uncontested second place finish. Man, he put his head down and he went for it. The first thing he did was just dunk his hand in a bag of ice. I know he was hurting. I had a crash in the first lap, the first moto, I was pretty far back and came back to fourth. And I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe today is the day where I can, you know, get a good points for the championship. Well, with Marvin, it's definitely a lot easier to run when you haven't got anything really to lose. Just put it all down there, give it my all, and here we go. And another good start for Baggett on the four, but Muscan is going to try to edge him out of the 25. It's side by side, and the whole shot goes to Muscan. Muscan and Baggett going one and two. Tomac had a great lap. He passed Baggett to the number two spot. Eli Tomac has figured this racetrack out. His corner speeds are scorching. He lays into the corner. He's running the 25 down. He's doggeting Marvin Muscan trying to hold on. ET3, and here comes Tomac. And Muskin, Muskin pulled right over into front of him, and here comes Tomac now. He's got the pass made, can Marvin Muskin come back on the inside? No. And he is pulled away from the 25. He very well could have given Marvin Muskin the knockout punch. For the second year in a row, Eli Tomac owns Southwick, Massachusetts. Attempting to keep up with Tomac's pace in the sand, Marvin crashed again in Moto2 shortly after his lead was taken away. It is the second time he would DNF this year in a season already filled with misfortune and unforeseen obstacles. I just ran to him and the feel thing is, are you okay? And he's like, I'm fine, it's just the bike. His frustration was he just wanted to go again, but he couldn't. That's why I was so fired up and like, why? You know, it, it, it was supposed to be a good day because I was riding pretty good with Eli and I couldn't get second place, so I lost a lot of points. Blake soldiered through Moto2 with a second place finish. 
Going 2-2 on the day was an unexpected feat for Baggett, and it moved him within 19 points of Eli Tomac, an attainable position for the championship, with five races still to go in the season. The thumb, I mean, it, it hurt, but we're in the fight for this championship, so it kind of looks like it's going to be a two-horse race for this thing, and I'm willing to fight for it all the way down to, to the last second, and uh, you know, hopefully it goes my way.